Hey guys, I am on the California Hiking and Riding Trail, also known as the CHRT. It's like a little through hike of Joshua Tree National Park. Very cool. It's about 38 miles. You can do it in two days. You can do it in three days. You can do it in a million days, whatever you want to do. It's beautiful. It takes you through all different parts of the park and uh, it's really well marked, so I recommend doing it. Now this video is a 360 video, so you can pan around and um, basically look around the trail as I hike and all the junctions. I also have a regular HD video that has an intro section that talks about planning the trip and where to cache water and everything. So um, watch the 360 video, but also watch the HD video so that you uh, can know what to do to get get all set for the hike. But anyway, here are the turn by turn directions in 360 beautiful degrees. So the hike starts at the Black Rock campground here. There's a small parking area for the back country hiking board here. Now don't forget to do your permit when you go through here. And you can see the permit box is right here. All pretty standard. Every backcountry board is pretty much the same here at Joshua Tree. I'm just going to continue through. The trail is easy to follow. It's a little sandy. And we're going to start the 37 and a half mile journey here. Now, right when you start, there's this little junction. You can see the trail is well marked. There's trail signs, there's mile markers. We're going to go straight here and start the climb up the wash. It's not really to a mountain summit. It's more to a, um, a flat area, Upper Covington Flat. But you can see the trails nice and easy to follow here as we go up. It is a little bit sandy, so if you have a full pack, it can be a little, a little challenging. Um, but this is the beginning of the hike, so you should have a ton of energy here. Some people actually skip the beginning of the hike and join in Covington flat, but uh, I do recommend doing the whole thing. It is beautiful. Now as you go up here, you can see this mile marker. There's a bunch of these mile markers on the trail now. Um, it's a handy way to uh, know how far you've gone and also just to know that you're actually on the California Riding and Hiking Trail. So look for the mile markers. Usually the front has your, your mileage and the back has the mileage coming the other way. Now the trail climbs up for a bit here. There are narrow sections, there are wider sections as you go up the wash. You're gonna climb about a thousand feet in the first five miles or so. And again, it's not a big steep mountain climb, um, but it can be challenging when you have a backpack on, you're carrying water. Now here's a sign for the fault trail off to the right. Again, very well marked here. We're gonna go straight to continue on the um, CRHT. And you can see there are some shady sections. There's some vegetation. Here's the trail junction for the Eureka Peak Trail. We're going to keep going straight once again. This will loop back into the California Riding and Hiking Trail up later once we get to the top. But we're going to go straight and continue up the gradual climb. And this is the part that people don't like, it's the wide part where you go up the wash. It's very sandy, it's hard to walk up. Um, but just take your time, there are shady parts. There are these mileage markers to give you some encouragement as you go. You can kind of get an idea of the slope here. It's not too bad, it's pretty doable. And it is beautiful here. There's, there's not a lot of people in this section of the trail. With our trail junction, we're going to go straight here and continue to go straight. Now you can see the wash gets smaller. There's some vegetation here where it gets rockier. The, uh, the trees and stuff actually go into the crevices of the rock to get water with their root system. So you get usually some more vegetation around the rocks as we go up here. This is the Bigfoot Trail off to the right. We're going to go straight. That was a little tricky because there's not a great, great signage there, but we're going to keep going straight. And pretty soon we're going to get near the summit. There's a near, there's a, excuse me, there's a another mileage sign 
just to give you an idea of the effort here, it can get a little long. And here we're coming up to the five mile sign. Right after this, we're going to come up to the top of the top of the ridge. And you can look back down there, you can see not super steep, just a nice long, easy climb up here to the top. And the good news is this is the, the longest and toughest climb of the hike. Once you get to the top, there's the Eureka Peak Trail that comes back in. We're not going to take that. We're going to keep going straight here. This area is flat to kind of downhill, maybe rolling, really easy to follow, really nice. It's Upper Covington Flat. And we're going to keep going straight here, and you're going to see some of the old signage. You'll notice the new signs are all etched metal, and they're obviously very durable. But there are still some old signposts and signs like this from the trail. The whole idea of the California Riding Hiking Trail dates back to 1944. There's a cool little history, so if you go to the website, I'll talk about the history a little bit. And you can check it out. Here's another one of the old signs. And then also you're going to join the road here. And you could walk down the road if you want, but who wants to walk down a road? You can see there's some traffic on here. Not a whole lot, but there are cars here. Another trail there. Off to the left, we're going to keep going straight on the CRHG. And it follows the... Um, Upper Covington Flat Road on the right. And we're just going to keep going straight here. Eventually we're going to cross over this access road that joins with the Upper Covington Flat Road. You can see there's some signage. You don't get a whole lot of tourists coming up here. It's kind of an out of the way section of the park. And you can see here's our handy signage for the CRHT right there. We're going to join the trail once again. This is a nice long cruisy section. You can get some nice views of the high mountains off to the left. San Gorgonio, San Jacinto be over there. And you can see the trail's easy to follow, not overgrown or anything. Pretty cruisy, pretty mellow. It'll feel good after doing that thousand foot climb. And keep going straight here. You can see some of the old signage here. There's some Joshua trees. This is a nice, easy, mellow part of the trail. And most of the trail is pretty flat and pretty mellow. There are some climbs, and I'll show you as we go here, but in general, it's a, I would say, an easy-ish 37, 38 mile backpacking trip. At this point, we're gonna to come to the backcountry board for Upper Covington Flat. Now, if you wanted to cash water, you could do it here. Um, there are cars here. These guys we saw earlier on the road, these are some locals who came up to check it out. They had said it snowed two days before we did this hike and they were coming to see what snow was left. There was absolutely no snow left, which is typical of Joshua Tree. I have a whole Joshua Tree tips page that talks about the weather. So just go to hikingguy.com if you wanna read about that. But here's the backcountry board. If you cached water, this is where it'll be. But otherwise you're gonna continue past there and after a little section of the desert um, cruisy part, you're going to come to a rocky section. And off to the left, you're going to be able to look down. And you're going to see Quail Mountain in the distance. Now, Quail Mountain over there is the highest point in Joshua Tree. There's not a trail trail to the top, but you can take kind of like a use trail scramble up there. And you can see here we're coming to an overlook. There's another handy mile sign. And we're basically going to go up there through the flat part up to the next ridge. When we get down here, this is actually Covington Flat. We were on Upper Covington Flat before. This is Covington Flat, and you can see, true to its namesake, it is pretty flat. There's Quail Mountain in the distance. Again, if you're taking four days, you can probably scramble up to the top there. Um, you know, why not, if you want to explore a little bit. As soon after coming down to the flat, there's this right-hand turn and it's well marked here. Now, although this is a flat, there is a gradual uphill to the ridge. So uh, take your time. There is again, mileage markers to help you or to crush you mentally, depending on how tired you are. Um, but when you get up to the ridge here, it'll be about 10 miles in from the start. 
There's a cool old mule deer skull here, whitewashed, that somebody left. Who knows if it'll be there when you're there, but uh, it's been there for a while. So check that out. Continue heading up towards the ridge, which you can see right over there. Now, one of my favorite camping spots, if you're doing a two or three day hike, maybe a three day, is up here along the ridge. You're going to get some nice views down to Juniper Flat. Right up here, you can see the ridge. You can see on a clear day, you can see Salton Sea, Coachella. And on a very clear day, you can see uh, Signal Hill, which is in Mexico, right by Mexicali. So cool place to camp. It does get a little breezy because you're in a pass. Uh, but right around here is a nice place to camp. Now, once you get over the ridge, you're going to continue down this little valley here, down to the Juniper Flats area. And this is a really beautiful descent as you go along the valley. Um, very lush. You go along this ridge line here. Lots of great views. You get glimpses of San Jacinto off to the right and the Salton Sea and uh, points south directly ahead of you. When you get to the bottom of this climb, there's a couple little washes to go through, a couple little ups and downs down here. You can see it's very lush. If there's any section you might want long pants, it might be here, but generally I'll do this in, in shorts, depending on the weather. And then we have our last little climb of the hike. Um, this is the steepest climb, it's not too long. Um, it's only about a mile and a half, but it is steep as you go up here. So just beware. But nothing like a big mountain climb. There's none of those. And you can see, you get nice views. San Jacinto, and you'll see the ridge that you came down earlier as you climb up here. And after about a mile and a half, you'll come up towards the top here, and you'll crest the ridge, and then you're basically going to have flat, cruisy, downhilly areas until the uh, very end of the hike at mile 37 and a half. So enjoy it. This is Juni uh, Juniper Flat here. The trail junction, again, well marked. We're going to keep going straight on the CRHT. And you can get an idea of how flat and cruisy it is from the shot. Now this section also has some good uh, dispersed camping options. And again, I have those marked on the map on hikingguy.com. Um, but it's a nice flat ridge line. You get some nice views up here. And there, if you're doing a two day hike, this is usually uh, where I would camp in this area here, split it in half. Here we are at another trail junction. We're gonna go straight. Again, very well marked, uh, all the trail junctions here. Joshua Tree in general has gotten much better about marking the trails as the visitation has sort of skyrocketed over the last few years. And can you go straight? Another mile marker. There's a lot more Joshua Trees in this section. We're going to sort of approach Keys View Road in a few minutes here in the Juniper Flats backcountry board. We have a little more hiking to do. This is all wilderness area, so technically they're not allowed to do any kind of roads or building here. Now, when you get here, if you make the right, you'll go to the Juniper Flats parking lot and backcountry board if you cached um, water there. You can see it's well marked, but otherwise the trail goes straight here. And you can really cache water anywhere you'd like to. Um, we're gonna cross the road here, Keysview Road. And some people you can see cache their water right at the trail here, so they don't have to go to the parking lot. The choice is yours, pros and cons to both. Um, right after the road crossing, there's another little access trail to the parking area, but we're gonna go ahead and go straight. In the distance is Ryan Mountain. The trail goes up and around there. Ryan Mountain's a very popular hike to kind of the highest point you can hike to on a groomed trail here. And then we're gonna see the um, rock climbing areas that's called uh, I believe the manure pile or manure heap that thing of rocks over there um, at the Orion campground now if you need to use a pit toilet or dump some trash off you can do it at the Orion campground or any of the campgrounds that we pass here that are regular campgrounds not dispersed campgrounds but otherwise we're going to make the right and continue on this section which gets a little rocky 
kind of getting to the Lost Horse Mine area. And this trail off to the right here would take us to the Lost Horse Mine Loop. I have a, gra a guide for that on Hiking Guide too. if you want to do that. It's a neat little hike. But otherwise, we're going to go straight. I told you that last climb was the last climb climb. Depending on how tired you are, there's a couple hundred feet of climbing here. It's pretty easy, um, but if you have a fresh uh, backpack full of water, it can be a little tough depending on your fitness level. And we're going to climb up to the ridge line. You might see a pipeline here, which is the old pipeline to the Lost Horse Mine, which is back off to the right. But once we crest that ridge, we're going to descend. And from here on out, for, for real real, it's pretty much flat or downhill the entire way with a couple little dips, but in general, there's no more uphills. We're going to go down this rocky descent here, down towards the geology tour road. As we go, again, another trail junction. We're going to go straight here. And this is hard pack sand, which is easy. The rocks and the hard pack sand are easy to um, move on, but the soft sand is obviously a little bit tougher and we're going to keep going and eventually we're going to get to the soft sand now this area also has some decent uh, dispersed camping there's some flat areas there's some areas with boulders and i've marked my favorite spots on the map on hiking guy so again just go check that out but otherwise you're going to enjoy this wide open expanse you're going to go across a couple little washes and you can see here the washes are generally well marked people have stoned the side of it so that you can know where to cross and uh, where to get back on there. Now we're going to come to the dirt road called the Geo uh, Geology Tour Road. And you can see at this backcountry parking lot here for the backcountry board, it's pretty full. This guy in the pickup truck is kind of parked out into the road, so there's not a ton of parking here all the time. It does help to do this hike on an off-peak time. If you cached water, this is where it hopefully will be if somebody didn't walk off with it. You're going to pass the geology tour backcountry board. And now you're kind of in the desert desert for most of the way to the end. And it really feels like you're in the wide open expanse of uh, Joshua Tree in the Mojave Desert here. And there's some other decent backcountry spots here. There's one place that kind of reminds me of the Wonderland of Rocks off to the left there. So if you're doing a three-day hike, this is another good place to camp. But we're going to continue on the sandy trail. It starts to go downhill here. And then we're going to come out um, at the road. Now, if you cached water here, um, there's a parking lot up to the left. And there's a campground down to the right. It's your last, um, well, not your last place to cache water, but one of your last places to cache water. But otherwise, we're going to cross the road here. It's actually called Pinto Basin Road. And the campground is down here to the right if you want to go down to use the pit toilet, dump some trash, get some cached water. But otherwise, we're going to go straight on the well-marked trail here. There is some dispersed camping spots here as well. You can see the mile marker. There's some cool little areas with boulders. If you're doing a four-day hike, uh, this is a good place to camp as your last little spot before you get to the end. And then here is the... Uh, Bell Campground off to the left there. Again, pit toilets, trash. But otherwise, we're going to keep going straight here on the last few miles until we get to the north entrance backcountry lots. You can see the trail's pretty sandy. It's downhill or flat, but uh, it can still be a little tough depending on how far you've gone at this point with the sandy soil and a backpack on your back. The trail is well marked. Again, there's the mile markers. There's little stakes in the ground. There's some of the old wooden posts uh, that you'll see along the route here. Here we're going to cross the access road, uh, one of the park service roads. There's a service facility to the left and to the right is the main park boulevard. If you needed to bail out for some kind of emergency, this would be the place to do it. Just off to your left there. But otherwise, I'm going to keep going straight. This is called Pinto Y here, and uh, it's a flat area. And we're gonna cross over another rocky area, which you can see ahead there. It's one little dip up, and then we're gonna have a little dip down through this rocky area. Now, up ahead in those mountains, um, 
There's actually some gold mines. There's gold mines all over the park. There's almost 300 mines here. None of them in the park are active anymore, not since the 1960s, but you can find remnants of them. Um, and if you want to explore them, just go to Hiking Guy where I have a bunch of different mine hikes. When you come down that rocky section, you're back in the familiar soft sand. Good news is that it's downhill. Uh, the road will be a few hundred yards off to your left there and across some washes. And again, the, the trail is marked. There's stakes in there. You can see footprints. You can see uh, rocks on the side. You can see little cairns. So it's decent to follow through here. And again, it goes along the road. And if you're looking at, looking at a map, it'll be kind of evident the way the trail should go. But there are some sections where it splits and it's a little, a little tricky once in a while. Soon you'll be able to see 29 palms in the distance, all these strip malls, fast food and supermarkets that will soon be reality when you leave the park. But otherwise you're gonna go down this section, which is sort of like a road. You can see a little stake there. There's a lot of these little wooden stakes down on the right, marking the trail in the spot where we cross through the washes and everything. And then towards the end, there's one big wash that we cross as we head back west towards the road. You can see this is all well marked out. Kind of gives you a good feeling as you're coming to the end, kind of like a finish line feeling. And pretty soon you are at the north entrance backcountry lots. And that's all 37 and a half or so miles of the CRHT. So that's the hike. Um, again, make sure you watch the HD video too. It's also on YouTube. And uh, if you are watching on YouTube, the link to the full article with all the maps and everything is right underneath the video. So please click on that. And if you found this helpful, please click on the little thumbs up button. That will help other people find this hike and not get lost in the desert in perpetuity. Anyway, any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. But uh, give it a try, the CHRT and Joshua Tree. See you guys.